sacrifices and, and making a show of a religion. We're, it's his will that we know. So he can't be unknowable. Now, there's at least a dozen scriptures you can find that'll accompany that, that, that to know me, right? To know me and my will. Um, maybe another one right here, 13... Yeah, 13.4. Hosea 13.4. Yet I have been Jehovah your Elohim since the land of Egypt. Uh, you were not to know any God except me. There is no Savior except me. So you were, you're to know God and you're to make the distinction or be able to discern between the true God and all the false Elohim, right? Is how that's working. And you were not to know any God except me. So you're to know there's one true God. And um, we'll get to the will in your life in just a second. Okay, Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed by lack of knowledge. Now this goes into uh, the covenant being rejected as priests, etc. But the fact of it is, the primary purpose of knowledge is not to know when the day begins or, or when the moon's doing anything it's doing. The first thing is related to idolatry and knowing who God is and what your responsibilities are to Him. That is paramount. First. First things first. You worship one God and none other. There's no other God beside Him. You know, before Him or behind Him or anywhere. And His people are destroyed from the lack of this knowledge and understanding. It's not just talking about, you know, scientific understanding or scriptural understanding. Well, scriptural understanding, yes, but I mean, applying the scripture in the correct way. So those are just a few scriptures for some highlights, but you can maybe just think about that, and you know, traveling on your way home, that, that this understanding of who God is, that's related to your salvation. It says that, I think, in three scriptures, the one I read. So it's a, these are salvation beliefs that you know who you worship. You can say God this or God that and God all day long. People say it all day in the, you know, on, when they're playing golf. So it's, you have to make sure you know who you're directing your worship to and, and uh, why. Now, according to his will, is expressly clarified in Acts 22, uh, verse 14, I think. So this plan, the more time you spend with God, should become clearer in your mind. It should give you more and more peace of mind every year, principally from now. But the whole purpose of tabernacles and Pentecost have their part in the plan. So it should make it clearer to us as the longer we keep it. Uh, Acts 22:14. The God of our fathers has appointed you to know His will. So this was directed to Paul um, when Ananias was sent to baptize him. Then his sins would be forgiven. Then he becomes part of the elect or the churches of God. Right, that, that's, what, that's what the center of this statement is, right? To hear an utterance from his mouth, you will be a witness to him of all men of what you have seen and heard. You know, Arise and be baptized, wash away your sins. So what is the, but the direction is that, that Paul, from his baptism now, is to know the will of God for the remainder of his life and fulfill it as much as he possibly could. And he did a very good job, didn't he? So um, this uh, knowing who God is and trying to trying to discern His will is what we've been doing since the first day of the first month in our lives personally and our families. Who you know, half of them are mad at us about something, and some quite vehement. You know, they're not just mad. They're, more than mad. Some spouses don't haven't attended, you know, that attended for years. So we will get um, put to the test, but it can only be within your your personal boundaries. You can't be tested more than you can bear up under. It's a guarantee you've got. So it, not that that helps when, you're, when everything's going wrong. Oh, that really helped a lot. But um, it's uh, only so much, and it basically, in most cases, when I think about things that happened to me and you know, in the last sort of 10 or 11 years, that most of them ended up resolving things in my mind. All right, so even though they're thoroughly unpleasant, you know, it wasn't, oh, gee, I'm, now I get another trial. This is really great. I'll have much better understanding after this is over. Where's the next one, you know? That's not our, 
that's not our nature to, to think like that. But in most cases that, that had come to mind when I was, you know, on the way here, I was I adding up who have I offended on the way here, who did not, and then I realized there was somebody I hadn't paid money that I said I was going to pay. All right, so I went back and I got, um, made a money order and mailed it off to them. This was after the, after the sanctification had started, right? Why? Because if you're not sure you're fulfilling your word and, and that type of thing, your offerings can be unacceptable. But I hadn't paid it. I just forgot. I went blank and, and forgot over about four months. And he didn't call me and say, you know, uh, can I expect this next, you know, within the next three months or something? I just forgot all about it. But it came to mind in, in part of the sanctification. So I had an error or an ignorance, I don't know how to categorize it, that I hadn't done to this fellow made aware of, right, when I was just writing down notes of, of uh, things that I should do or shouldn't have done and, you know, what can I fix or not fix. So it was, uh, now it turned out, he said, no, nah, I don't need it, don't don't send it. I said, oh, I have to send it. <laughs> so you, if you just do some of this, thinking of, you know, of, of our, your relationship to God, he'll often put things or make things clear to you of, of things that you may have forgotten or not done. He does, you know. He does, treats me like that anyway. So I don't, you know, I don't know your individual circumstances. But um, now, as far as idolatry, that's why we can we we keep on with this feature of idolatry. It's because it's the biggest plague in humanity, and most of the curses on the planet, you know, uh, usury and all these other curses are in place because of humanity's idolatry, and and including most of the, you know, most of the. the we're calling them Sardis Hero just because of the name living. But, I mean, most of the churches of God believe there's two true gods, one of whom was able to die. Okay, Isaiah 44, 18. You could back up to you know about verse 12, and it's all a lead up for this verse as to idolatry, making of idols, half the wood. You know, um, verse 15. There's something wood is something for a man to burn. Takes one of them and warms himself. He also makes a fire to bake bread. He makes a god and worships it. Makes a graven image and falls down before it. Half of it he burns in the fire, and over this half he eats meat. Uh, as he ro rose, arose and is satisfied, he warms himself, saying, Ah, I am warm, I have seen the fire. The rest of it he makes into a god, his graven image, falls down before it, worships, and prays to it, saying, Deliver me, for you are my god. So all of the lead-up to this verse here is idolatry. I mean, you can't get more blatant than that. Verse 18, They do not know, nor do they understand, for he has... It may be closed. American standards got smeared. Like, uh, he has shut. He has smeared over their eyes so that they cannot see, and their hearts so they cannot comprehend. So shut their eyes and ears so you can't understand things you hear. So they're comprehend. That's why you you can't win an argument, and there's no point in trying. You just put out a piece of the truth that may may they may give them something to think about because you can't win the debate if they're idolatrous. Their eyes are closed, their ears are shut, God will have to open it. But it may well be you, you can save your spouse at a later date just by how we conduct ourselves or information you present because you or we as a body are part of the, of the plan of reconciliation. And we have an important part to play. God is doing it all. Christ made it all available through his acceptable sacrifice. You've got a big part to play. And most of the features of worship that we've talked about all, all week here, or the, or the features of the gifts and the activities that we do, are all tied into it intimately, right? So, and so to help us uh, apply better things that we have a weakness in, because we all have a strengths and weaknesses, and they can vary, uh, vary quite a bit. Okay. So here's a, just a bit of a summary statement. Uh, for he has made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of his will. So these are the mysteries of the plan of God. According to the purpose which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven 